Hello, welcome to Bars and Bells. My name is Ian, and here is Lauren, in the blue, in the back, making her way to the front with all that flair. Hello, welcome. I'm Ian. As I said, this is Lauren. Join us today at our handstand practice for simple and strong skills to work on core strength, arm strength, full body tension, all the skills that we like to perfect. We'll start on the floor for today. Don't hit yourself too hard. Take your time, be creative, come on down on the floor. Let's start today in a light pigeon or a modified 90-90, tall sit, mer person position, you name it. Let's hang out here. Take a moment and ask your upper back to rotate. Did your chin move with the body or are you looking much further than where your sternum is pointing? Come to center, try rotating the other way. Sit tall, use the other hand as your outrigger, and again, try to keep the chin in line with the sternum. Repeat one more time in a rotation, chin to sternum in the same line, come back center, and one final time, open up and hinge. Take a hand to the lateral leg. Here I have it, left hand to left knee. Gently try to lift that up. Create some tension on the outside of the hip. And three, two, relax. Push the hands forward just a little bit and gently look at Lauren's right leg there. And I'll try to also lift up the foot from the hip and hold for three, two, and down. Come back up to tall. Take the hand to that lateral leg and again, lift away, create tension on the lateral aspect of the hip for three, two, and relax. Hinge forward just that little bit extra, and without hiking a hip, rotate in the hip socket, trying to lift the foot off the floor. Return to the ground. From here, let's extend the hips through. Take time to sit back down. Twice more. Extend the hips through and come on down. One more time. Extend the hips through. Where can you go next? Where can you go? Awesome. So let's take that leg back and then return it back to there. It's interesting to know where that goes in the back. For two more, let's take a step through. Balance. Hey. Watch your company here. Get into that lunge position and then return the knee to the foot. And then last one, step through. Return that knee to the foot, gently sit low, and then anyhow if you can, switch to the other side. Modify 90, mer person position. From here, same thing with the upper, bo upper body rotations. Take the shoulders for a spin, keeping the sternum and the chin in line. Rotate the other way, push the hips forward, and gently ask for the upper back to rotate. Rotate one more time to each side, looking to lengthen out and get tall with each repetition. Chin in line with sternum. It's easy to get carried away with that head neck. Keep the chin in this line with the sternum. Return to center. Use that hand as an outrigger, promoting our tall upper body and place the right hand on the lateral aspect of the knee. Gently lift up from the hip, creating tension on the lateral glute for three, two, and relax. There is no lateral glute, but there's all this lateral stuff to the hip. That's what we're talking about, that hip holster. Hinge forward like Lauren did and lift up the back foot and hold for five, four, three, slow down, Sit back up tall, take the hand to the lateral aspect of the leg, and again, lift up and away to create tension on the outside of the hips. Brace the core for two seconds, relax. Hinge forward just that little bit. Without hiking the hip, think an internal rotation that again, that hip holster could and should feel lit up. Two, one, and off. From here, let's extend the hips for a repetitions of three extending those hips through for one. Take a look at where your knee is in relation to your foot. And in a second, 
we'll try to get it back there. So now come back to the bum, two more of those, but again, feel and look where that foot is in regards to the knee. Take your time low, last time. And then from here, we'll take that outside leg, step it through in our lunge, return the leg to about that knee. I crushed my foot too. From there, out to the side, and then knee to toe here. And last repetition, outside, knee to toe. Return to the ground, have a sit, and let's get on our hands and knees here now. Warming up those wrists with our first knuckle push-ups will open up the hands wide and spin those blood donations forward. Modify in a, mo a push-up stance similar to me or in all fours like Lauren and proceed for our first repetition of our first knuckle push-up. Take time to slowly build that tension as we crush the floor. Torque up, grip with those fingertips and push to the first knuckles. Slow down. Add challenges as you need, including modifying or adopting a tougher, longer planks position. Full body tension like bum squeezes as we repetition again. Core brace and armpits heavy will help that skill. And down. Wiggle those out. Take a moment, do a 180 degree flip at those and have your fingertips face the knees. Pull your shoulders low and shrug them and ask yourself in your handstand practice, where would you like your shoulders? The elevated shoulders are up is the right answer, but for now, pull them down. Grip the floor with those fingertips, all eight or 10 of them, including the thumbs, and then hold it and push the fingertips heavy as we slowly bend the elbows and peel the hands off the floor. And shake that out as well. Wrist extension, super important for that handstand skill. As a nice anecdote to that, wrist flexion is also nice. Against the wall would be a modified or a beginner version for this exercise. One at a time or with both, we could take and press the backs of the hands to the floor, making sure that we can, can, can keep the shoulder and armpit packed, the elbow straight, and feel a nice stretch on the fuzzy part of your elbow or forearm. Remember that throughout the practice as something different and as part of your wrist maintenance strategy going forward. With wrist prep checked, let's check in with the overhead mobility and some core strength, and then we'll get into some crawls and our minute of fun. Under the back. Take some time introducing the overhead. overhead. On your back, bend your knees as if we're to perform a hip bridge. Take your hands, palms on the floor, shrug your shoulders, push your shoulders low, and continue to draw an arc towards the toes, to the knees, to the ceiling, as we reach the hands towards overhead. Tuck a chin, making sure that the ribs can stay connected to the hips as you bring the arms straight overhead. Are your elbows straight? Does it feel safe to be here? Take stock of this overhead position as you pull the arms back to over the chest and then commit to flush with the floor down low. Shrug, pull low, keep reaching low to go high, tuck a chin every now and then, and slowly keep the lumbar spine, low back heavy to the floor, rib cage connected, nice extension or straight elbows, and pull down and reset. Let's add our core hollow into that, modifying with our knees. Let's hold our first core hollow for 15 seconds. Hands this time, palms face up at the hips. Push that sternum towards the ceiling and hold this nice crunch shape for five, four, three, two, easy on the off to return to the ground. Take a breath. Let's do that one more time as we lift the heart and sternum up. The shoulder blades might just barely stay on the floor. We're making sure we're not reaching with the neck and for five more seconds, hold this shape. For three, two, and relax. That three inch crunch sets up the basis for our hollow. One more time, let's turn the palms over, shrug and pull the shoulders low. 
take those hands and bring them towards overhead. From here, you can shrug your shoulders. From there, can we lift that chest up off the floor and hold our hollow position for 15. We can breathe into this. We're trying to encourage those arms overhead. We feel core tension on abs, but not too much or anything on the low back for three, two, easy on the off. Stay there for one more repetition if that's feeling good for you or challenge it accordingly with your knees over the hips or feet off the floor. Maybe those toes could point to the ceiling. Connect those ribs and hips. And for 15 seconds, let's lower the limbs to your safe place where you could talk or sing happy birthday or at least making sure your low back feels safe and your core is politely stressed out for three, two, soften those knees and return to the ground. Have a little bit of a wiggle here, a little bit of this roll action could feel quite nice and take a second. My abs feel ready, my shoulders feel good. So from here, I'm gonna flip over, push myself up to a push-ups position. I use my knees, then I'll lift my knees. I'm gonna walk my butt to the ceiling here in our inchworm, our down dog, or our peak, mountain peak. And my hamstrings say, holy, you must have swung yesterday. From here, shrug the shoulders or push the floor away and then pull down, accepting or pulling the floor. Push the floor away and aim to have that habit continue through your handstand practice. Pull low. Push away and for 10 or 12 strides, take an opposition, opposing limbs in a gait pattern. My left leg, my right arm. My left arm, my right leg. Beep, beep. Beep, beep. Move out of the room. Move out of the room. Move out of the way or backwards or sideways, build that relationship with the floor and let's walk around like elephants here for five more steps. One, two, three, four, and five. Take your time to either fold or hinge up and come up to standing. As like last week, it's fun to work on other kinds of balances to accessorize our handstand practice. For today, let's stand on a single leg, bringing our knee or flexing the hip to bring the foot to the knee. If this is too easy, look up. If that's too easy, look to the side. If that's too easy, close your eyes and return to the center, then open them and switch. Find that hip flexion position looking like the number four or the letter P. Look straight ahead and then look up. Then look over a shoulder. And then look over your other shoulder. And then maybe close your eyes and bring things back to center. <sighs> Clearly Lauren's Ooh. closed eye balance. She's faking it maybe. No, no she's not, it's a little bit better than mine. Work on balance in other ways, including of our handstand. From here, let's get into our last fun crawl of the day. It's the least fun crawl in my opinion. It would be the crab walk. We'll do two quick versions. First, let's gently get into a squat. Squat stance, take your time getting towards your safe low. Don't close your eyes. From here, hands. take your hand to the back. And then the same thing, hand to the back. Close up those legs and just walk around with bent knees and a low bum for a couple strides each way. Commit to pressing the floor away, keeping the elbows very straight at the triceps and maybe walking side to side or front back. Put your bum down, relax for a second. That's version easy. Version hard includes extending the hips to a bridge position Higher, higher, yeah. And maybe from here, we can just stay or we can try to walk side to side, front to back, keep the hips up 
engaged core and hold for three, two, slow relax. I like that shoulder extension in there too. That can be very problematic for the shoulder being in such a position, but also that hopefully opens up that overhead range for us to play with our handstand. Sorry, Lauren's gonna say something. I don't remember now. Put her on the spot, don't know. That's okay, because it's time for a minute of fun. Minute of fun for today will include just gently talking to your handstand. Hopefully you know your kick up or you'd like to play with your kick up from a different position. Lauren will go, we'll go together. Play with our handstand here. Tuck in the shirt, put the hair behind the ears. Tell yourself what you're doing. So for me, I'm gonna take my step, scissor my legs and come down. Step, scissor those legs, come down, pressing the floor away. Lauren setting up with her shoulders over top of wrists, working on that nice split leg kick up, being patient in between, switchy switch and down. Your own pace, in a minute, you might get five repetitions. Find some success, find the thing that you would like to work on, let us know in a comment section. We love hearing about your progress. Ooh. I always find that first round quite challenging. I do too. First time upside down, it's a little bit of a shock to the body. We're going to go one last repetition. And again, make sure that you can talk in between sets. We don't want to work to, to be too fatigued at this point. And come down, Lauren. There's lots of time to work on that, but that does look good. Last one here. Hey, I'm going to switch my feet just for one here. Take off with the other leg. Ooh, a little bit harder. Was that fun? I sure think so. Hopefully we can continue our fun. This time working on bent knees. Whew. Do you have two chairs? Do you have those Ottomans placed from last week? I'd like to continue our pursuit with our little baby pommel here and working on our hovers. Laura and I will go in an I go, you go way. I'm gonna aim for about a 10 second hold and we'll coach Lauren to do the same. 10 seconds on, followed by rest. Let's do it twice. Follow one of us, maybe watch me to start and then join in when it's Lauren's turn. Put those two chairs together, nice firm surface. Stack the shoulders over top of those wrists. Load yourself onto those rings by bringing the knees forward and pulling up as allowed. Leaning forward to get those legs parallel for three, two, and down with control. Rest in between, shake it out. That is not easy. What we're going to do here is use the, probably use the floor. So as Lauren loads up, she'll tuck one leg. <laughs> okay, she can do that too. So nice and slow to hold for maybe 10 seconds for four, three, two, and relax. Lauren isn't one for modifications. So I'm gonna do a nice modification here and then Lauren might follow or she'll try it again. So you could go on the floor if you want, Lauren it's says. Yep, yeah. two heavy kettlebells work as well to place under the hands. There we go. Okay, so a nice modification to that because it is quite crazy is to really think about the one tuck. So with, oh, excuse me, I'm just gonna switch. So with my front leg here, I'm gonna lean forward so my shoulders are over top of my wrists. I'm gonna pull in and flex and compress in that hip, aiming to get that front leg or my right leg here parallel with the floor. Hold that for five seconds, leg out back as if we're holding our nice strong plank, bring a single knee forward, pull up, create nice tension, hold for time, back to our plank and hinge and up, easy. Lauren, you're supposed to be resting. That was great, I like it. That was very good. Are you ready to go again? No. So maybe finish up that last set of reps again, looking for stiff arm strength and our tuck 
Our tuck shape shows up in those squat cartwheels that we're into, as well as a nice fun progression once we master our handstand line to work in some jump tucks. Last time, here we go. Straight arms, casual weight transfer, parallel quads. Lauren's gonna call me out on those straight elbows for three, two, and relax. Let's come back to a single leg balance, taking some time off those arms. On a single leg, bring that foot back up to the ankle nub. From here, let's press a knee forward, sinking low in a squat. Extend the hip to tall and rise onto the single foot. Take time to slow lower. Go twice more on this leg. Knee to over toe. Extend the hips with cramp tension. Find the front of the foot and down. Saying hi to someone in the hallway. Not using that as an excuse. That was a bad balance. Here we go. Last time. One more time. Nice focused balance here. And slow down. A little bit of a wiggle and a shake. Same thing on the other side. Toe to ankle nub. Press that knee towards over the toe. Straighten out with the hip extension to rise. And slow lower. Knee to over toe. Straighten out that knee. Back up to a full rise. Reset. Last repetition. Knee forward. Extend to tall. Rise. Lower with borderline control there. And shake. One more time on these tucks. Work on that stiff arm strength and that core compression. The nice progression again can include in our planks position, press the floor away, projecting through the shoulders, pull the knee and aim to get it as far forward and as parallel to the floor. If you're with me, let's go for 10, nine, eight, Five, four, three, two, soft dismount. There we go. So I'm going to rest in between. Watch one of us follow along with Lauren here. Somewhat dangerous thing we could do with a partner includes the following. Lauren will load up. She'll give me one of her legs. And then Whoa. I'm going to hold her right there. Her job is to pull off my hand at her feet. Pull off my hand for three, two, and then relax. A band out the back on a safe, secured apparatus Don't could also do the same thing. Forward. Ooh, planche styles. Okay, so one more time. Last one today for Team Red. Aiming for 10 second holds. Super straight arms. Don't worry, I'll hold your speed up this time. No, no. I know what you mean. <laughs> okay, here we go. Stiff arms. Hold, leaning forward, push, away the floor. push the floor away. Oh, that's tough. Wiggle out those arms. Would you like assistance for the last one? No. Great. Sometimes it's helpful to have that little bump in the middle, make it a little bit easy, but finish strong, finish on your own. Take your time. So good. So good, three more seconds, Lauren, and relax. Excellent, put your chairs away at home. We'll put our pommel away. Work on those stiff arm balances, core compression holds for strength. Let's return to those legs. Ankle to knee, excuse me, ankle to that little top bit down low. Can we go low? Can we rise onto one foot down low? Can we stand up tall on a single foot and then lower completely? Ooh, same thing other side. Toe to ankle nub, nice control low. Can you find that toe balance? Stand up with control. Reset, darn it. Let's do one more time. Don't look at me, I'm, I'm looking at myself here too and I think that's part of the issue. Ankle, touch. 
knee bends, pressing over toe. Can we find the ball of the foot? Stand up tall, hold for one second, and reset. Last switch, ankle or toe to that nub, medial malleolus, knee bend over toe, really beautiful line on Lauren. Find the ball of the foot and press to tall and reset. Continuing with our static holds for something different, we're working on our crow. We're gonna hold for again about two, two times 10 seconds and can we hang out in a squat position in between? Ready to rock? Let's do it. We're using our crow here to really feel those hands. Press into the floor to play with the weight and build some strength on this time bent arms. Lauren's ready in the squat. We'll get low. Lauren goes first. Team Ian gets the watch. From here, Lauren will take her hands and grip the floor. Stiffen those elbows at the start. Wait, am I going or you you're going, you're going, you're going. Elbows again, or knees rather, can be on the triceps or hugging in tight. And for a couple extra seconds, we're holding our flexed elbow position and then press the floor away to go back to your squat. Nice job. As long as your squat's accessible, hang out. Team Red, let's go. We have hands that are on the floor. We'll shift our weight forward with straight elbows and bend the elbows as we get towards our low position. Hold. The hardest thing that we're gonna do here is slowly perhaps lower to the floor to get the head to touch and then using the strength in those hands, press back to our crow. Team Blue or Team Lauren, one more time. Hang out in that rock bottom squat with me as Lauren does her awesome crow. Slowly work the forehead to the ground and with the fingertips, yeah, way to go, way to go. Press, <laughs> press. <laughs> there we go, nice. Maybe stand up or hang out in your squat one more time. And then Team Red here, we have hands, knees on, my elbows flex. We transfer the weight and nice and slow, heels heavy on those hands and fingertips. Last one, nice and control to tall. Team Red's had enough, so we're gonna stand up. Maybe join Lauren for one last set here as we slowly go down, nice and press, way to go. Really hard work. We know how hard that is. Have fun with that drill. Again, if we're in our handstand, could you do a quick handstand here? Lauren's gonna do her handstand. I'm gonna spot. Beautiful. If we're over here, it's a little bit of these abs, of course, but it's the hands that we're gonna use to push ourselves back. Push this way to go the other way. Think about that in your handstand to really commit to your straight line and feel the hand balance oh, in the handstand. Is this it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Holy. Like 30 seconds of okay. Let's go. We that's why Lauren said that's our last curl. We're going to finish last drill here. Sorry the time escaped us a little bit, but here we're going to have one minute of fun. Try to hold your single longest handstand or at least pursue your handstand for one minute. Three. Two, one, let's go. Where's the second hand? It's almost at the nine. That's been 45 seconds then? 45 seconds. Oh, no, Darn it. I can't I'm going to get that one of I these days. In my head for me. I'm going to get that one of these days. And we hope that you're getting it too. We hope our skills and drills here are helping the pursuit of your handstand and continue to allow you to have fun in your practice. Lauren can't get enough of it, whether it's a cartwheel or a handstand. Let's sign off today. 
trying to chase that beautiful line and a split to, for fun. It's not my Let's continue to work on those basics. We'll train simple and, to, and stay strong. Thanks again. If you're just getting started, join us with a light kettlebell for another half hour beginner body weight and kettlebell practice. Or save for another time on demand and catch up with you soon. We got to go. We're on live for barbell. Excuse me. We're live up next for beginner body weight and bell. We'll see you soon. Stay strong. Have a good night. Bye-bye.